The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 703. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a singer-songwriter from Thousand Oaks, California, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Catherine Ho. Catherine, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Yeah, for sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Catherine. Super excited to be on the Tao of Self-Confidence. And you guys may know me from my Mandarin cover of Coldplay's Yellow that was featured on the soundtrack of the hit Hollywood film Crazy Rich Asians. And yeah, I'm so excited to be here today. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Catherine, what's your cultural background? So I'm first generation Chinese American. My parents moved to the United States for graduate school and both my brother and I were born and raised in California. Thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote is, Comparison is the Thief of Joy by Theodore Roosevelt. I learned about this at an acapella summer camp that I was at. And ever since then, it's just been so relatable. And I hope people people can keep this in mind when they're feeling the pressure to compare themselves always to other people. Thanks for sharing that quote, quote, and it is a great reminder, especially, you know, for Asian women, we're so great at the comparing game. So, you know, this is a great reminder to realize, like, you know, we just focus on ourselves and just enjoy the process. So thanks for sharing that. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? So my definition of self-confidence is knowing that you deserve happiness and respect just as much as everyone else. And this is kind of a unique angle, I guess, on self-confidence because for me, growing up, self-confidence was a lot about feeling insecure about being Asian and telling myself that I was lesser than. So for me personally, that is what self-confidence is. Thanks for sharing that. You know, that's a great definition. Happiness has to start with us, right? And I know um, growing up Asian, it's always been ingrained in our heads that we have to please other people or make other people happy and kind of sacrifice our own in the process, not realizing like it has to start with us and that happiness will flow. So I really like that definition that you mentioned. And Catherine, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Yeah, so growing up, I wasn't really proud of my cultural identity. Like, I went to Chinese school, hung out with mostly Asian people, and participated in my city's Lunar New Year shows. But deep down, I don't think I was truly proud to be Asian. And it's really interesting because I grew up with a super supportive and loving family, and I attended great schools, and my town was pretty open-minded and inclusive. But I still somehow convinced myself that I was lesser than because I was Asian. And I felt that because I told myself I was inherently worth less than others. I had to work many times harder than non-Asians in order to achieve the same results to somehow make up for the fact that I was Asian, which is obviously a really toxic mindset to have. And looking back, I think this kind of stemmed from me almost idolizing white culture and white people. And I always kind of wish that I was white or at least not Asian. And saying all this out loud, it's obviously very toxic and it caused me to be really insecure growing up. Thanks for sharing that. I can totally relate. I mean, my parents migrated to Canada when we were young and, you know, we never saw anyone other like, you know, it was the first time we saw like, you know, white people and, you know, other cultures. And, you know, part of me was like, I wish I had blonde hair and blue eyes, right? Instead of having black hair and like chinky eyes, you know, but that's, that's part of life. That's a part of growing up. I mean, you know, we, we see things and we feel like we're less than others because of maybe our culture or the color of our skin, not realizing we are more than enough. And what was that point in your life when you realized you can go out there and be who you are today, especially, you know, having the song, you know, featured in Crazy Rich Asians, which which is, you know, such a, a great time, especially with Asian representation coming up, you know, what was that aha moment? Yeah, so I'm really glad you brought up Crazy Rich Asians because truly for me, seeing that movie, the first Hollywood film in 25 years to feature an all-Asian cast, was monumental in my own self-confidence journey. Seeing people that looked like me portrayed on the silver screen in a contemporary and badass, lovable way was really inspiring. And for the first time, I was so proud to be Asian and to be part of a vibrant and diverse community that has contributed so much to American society. And 
I'm really honored that I also had the opportunity to sing the Mandarin cover of Yellow and Crazy Rich Asians. This song meant a lot to the director of the film, John M. Chu. And the backstory is kind of, it's really, the backstory is really interesting because John M. Chu chose Yellow because he wanted to reappropriate the meaning of the word. As most people know, historically, Yellow was an ethnic slur used to describe Asians, but John really wanted to change that. And he said, if we're going to be called Yellow, we're going to make it beautiful. And initially, Coldplay denied the use of yellow in Crazy Rich Asians, but John was so passionate about using the song that he wrote a letter to Coldplay explaining his mission to turn yellow into a beautiful rather than a derogatory adjective and how the song inspired him to embrace his identity in a society that told him to reject it. And I thought that story was really beautiful. And on top of that, I thought it was really comforting to know that even John, a person who I look up to immensely as a leader in Asian American representation in Hollywood, even a guy, a person like that used to struggle with his Asian American identity. And I used to be ashamed of the fact that I was not more proud of who I am and I thought that I must be the only person to feel that way because all of the all of my Asian friends seemed pretty comfortable and proud to be Asian but hearing that other Asian Americans had similar struggles was really comforting and I think if anything it helped me embrace my identity even more. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, it's a great story that you shared with us, especially, you know, the meaning behind as to why, you know, the director chose this song right and how you mentioned that you know he turned it into something beautiful versus something negative and it's you know it's amazing when we can try to turn something negative into something positive and the you know the effects that it can have on us and i'm really great you were able to do that and yeah it's true sometimes we feel like we're all alone in this world and we only go through certain things on our own not realizing like everyone actually goes through that or there's a lot of people who go through that and you know just hearing that you're not the only one does give us like a sigh of relief knowing like okay they've been through it and they were able to come out of it so if it's possible for them then it's possible for me as well and because of this realizations what's your life been like now so never in my life have i been more proud to be asian than i am now and i am also noticing that i'm consuming and supporting more asian centric media than i ever did growing up number one because there's some really good content coming out now and it's just amazing to watch regardless of if you are asian or not but also because i've experienced firsthand how powerful representation can be for a young person's self-confidence and i just want to support media that would do the same for other asian americans and i also hope to continue to use my voice and my art to inspire others to embrace their identity just like crazy rich Asians and yellow helped me embrace mine. And a disclaimer, I definitely have not fully achieved self-confidence, but also I think it's pretty normal that someone's journey of self-confidence is not linear. And I'll, I will always have insecurities and self-doubt, but I know that as I mature and age, I'll have more experiences and learn more lessons and acquire more tools to help me keep these feelings of insecurities at bay until gradually the feelings will become fewer, further between, and less severe. Thanks for sharing that. And I think you're doing a great job, you know, representing Asians and doing your part. I think, you know, um, when we all, you know, just go out there and, you know, do our work or just show up, it really does make a huge difference, no matter how big or small it may be. So, you know, I think what you're doing is great. And, you know, I'm sure there's lots of more opportunities coming your way. So thanks for sharing that. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Okay, I guess I'll start with the one that I think is most important. So I know that from kind of just observing my friends around me and like not necessarily in my own life, but I've noticed that mental health kind of is a very taboo topic in the Asian American community and people are kind of afraid to talk about it and people think, oh, I must be so ungrateful if I have to complain about my feelings and stuff like that. But I just want to say I'm a huge advocate for therapy. Mental health is so important and no issue is too small to discuss with a professional and uh, seeking help doesn't make you weak and it takes immense courage to be vulnerable with your emotions. And I started seeing a therapist two years ago for some issues I was going through and I, my self-confidence went up so much and I seriously can't even imagine what my life would be like today if I hadn't had that therapist with me. And in terms of mental health, seeking therapy is not the only way that 
you can go about it. It's definitely a very important part of it. But I also find that consuming inspiring media really helps uh, listening to self confidence podcasts like this one or uh, finding your favorite songs or reading books. And oftentimes through consuming the media, you'll find that you're not alone in your insecurities. And you might even gain valuable insight on how to overcome these struggles. I also think it's really important to surround yourself with people that bring out the best in you rather than be hyper focused on pleasing everybody. I definitely overvalued people pleasing growing up. And as a result, I literally thought it was the end of the world if someone didn't like me or didn't agree with some view that I had. And looking back, I regret wasting so much time trying to be perfect and save every strained relationship because it often made me forget to focus on the people that love me the most. And I think that holding onto the people, experiences, conversations, etc. that make you feel the most fulfilled is especially important when you doubt yourself the most. So to sum up these two points, don't be afraid to let go of people who are causing negative energy in your life. And when you are feeling insecure or hopeless, try to take a mental moment to remind yourself of the people and memories that bring out the best parts in you. And also, I know that it's easier said than done, but it's important not to always compare yourself to others and measure your worth solely based on quantitative and material measures because they may or may not even be in your control. And it's so easy to get caught up measuring yourself by your salary or your career trajectory or like the number of likes you get on a picture. But these measures can be very misleading and are truly not valid measures of success on their own. And I think everyone knows that inherently, but I think the more you hear it repeated to you, it just helps the message sink in. So um, I think it's also easy to discount your own successes because one of your peers is quote unquote, even more successful than you. But I think it's important to remember that everyone is on their own path. So as long as you're actively working on improving yourself, then you're already achieving so much more success. And lastly, as I mentioned before, it was really comforting to me to hear about other people's struggles with self confidence, because it made me feel like I wasn't alone. And it's not really a piece of advice. But I just wish I could let people struggling with self confidence know that they too are not alone. I for one, journey with self-confidence has not been linear by any means but I think that's perfectly okay and it's important to celebrate your successes little and big and not be too hard on yourself if you fall into certain insecurities again because we're all learning and I truly believe that no one is 100% self-confident all the time. Thanks for sharing those great tips. And, you know, I really love all the tips that you mentioned. Um, you know, mental health is huge. And I know sometimes, you know, in an Asian upbringing, it's sometimes a taboo. We have to realize, like, this is something that we should go and seek help, right? No matter no matter how you do it, right? Like you mentioned, it doesn't have to be therapy. It could be talking to a friend. It could be reading books, listening to podcasts, whatever fits you know you and if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your work is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with yeah of course so i would say my main platform for advertising my music and just posting about my life is instagram and my handle is k-a-t-h-o dot d-e so cat ho dot d-e my twitter is i am katherine ho and you can also check out my youtube which is singer k ho and also i am debuting my original single called belly aches and you can find that on all streaming platforms Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Catherine, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Catherine's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Catherine today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you so much for having me. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free audiobook by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.